Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's October 18th. We do have an update from Uvalde CISD. So this email message went out to parents. He said late yesterday, a threat received on social media was reported. The person reported that a student had threatened a shooting at Uvalde High School. The threat was immediately reported to Uvalde Police Department and to DPS. That's right. So the Uvalde Police Department and DPS working together and they did locate and arrest a juvenile last night and that person is in custody. So they did address that situation and again we get this email from Uvalde CISD. Yeah, they said we understand this message may cause additional stress to some of you. However, we believe is important to communicate these situations as they occur with parents and their family. So we'll keep you updated on that story as we get more on it throughout the morning. Yes, we'll keep you updated online as well. And for now, let's go outside with live cam. We'll actually go inside with Justin <laughs> there, guys. to check on the latest. But yeah, it's nice out there. It is beautiful. What I can tell you is that uh, the, the weather is great to start today. We've got some cloud cover. It was a great sunrise and we're going to see the cloud cover kind of slowly work its way out of here later this afternoon. Let's start with the radar, though, because we still do have a few lingering showers down to the south of San Antonio. So we're talking Pleasanton down to Corpus Christi and really these are starting to shift out of our area. So rain, we're pretty much done with that and uh, it'll be a mostly cloudy day to start. Let's look at some of the weather headlines and as far as uh, clouds go, it'll be a slow clearing, gradual clearing, but I do think we go mostly sunny this afternoon. That leads to some cold temperatures tonight. We are expecting 40s in San Antonio, 30s in the Hill Country, some of the coolest temperatures we've seen in a long, long time. How about that next chance of rain? It is in the seven day forecast. It shows up on Monday. Right now, 57 and mostly cloudy. Northeasterly winds at about six. Winds could be a little bit breezy from time to time today. We make it up to 63 noontime and then by four o'clock, 68. And there we go, mostly clear going into tonight, 62 at 7 p.m. Very quickly, we want to make you aware of a situation we have going on on I-35. There's a vehicle fire there and it is backing up traffic in a big way. This is southbound and you can see that red line extends all the way up to 1604. So we're talking 60, 1604 all the way down to Thousand Oaks, a backup because of that vehicle fire. And guys, I think you have a view of the Transguide camera. Yeah, that's a look at the Transguide camera. You can see the traffic backed up there at I-35 at Thousand Oaks. There, there it is, it. yeah. Uh, traffic definitely slowing down there. Uh, and again, like Justin said, southbound lanes. So you might want to avoid this area. We will keep you updated as that unfolds throughout the morning. And one of the top stories this morning, the student loan debt relief program, millions of borrowers could be eligible for thousands of dollars in relief. So if you don't have those loans, you might have to pick up the tab for those who do. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, that could happen through taxes and inflation. If you earn less than $125,000 a year, you'll get up to $10,000 knocked off your student debt. People with federal student loans who meet that condition now can apply for that cancellation at studentaid.gov. Borrowers with Pell Grants who meet the income requirements can get double the relief. The White House says beta testers reported the website was user friendly. One said it was the easiest application they've ever filled out, uh, took maybe 60 seconds. The Department of Education could request more information from some applicants later. Today, President Joe Biden says more than 40 million Americans could see this student loan relief. But could that extra spending power increase inflation? Some Democrats say no. There have been a lot of studies around this, and what they've shown is that it's not going to have an impact on inflation. But the nonpartisan committee for a responsible federal budget says yes. It estimates Biden's student debt policies altogether could boost inflation between a six and a quarter point over the next year. That would mean higher prices and likely higher interest rates. Another drawback of Biden's loan initiatives is that taxpayers foot the bill. It's very unfair you know, to have a truck driver have to pay back a loan from somebody that got like a Ph.D. in gender studies. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, several lawsuits are challenging this latest student loan forgiveness policy. A U.S. district judge could soon decide whether to temporarily block it. 
Well, three weeks from today is Election Day, and with control of Congress up for grabs, things are getting nasty on the campaign trail. Two debates were held last night in two of the closest watch campaigns, the race for Senate in Ohio and the race for governor in Georgia. So the candidates getting personal, taking on issues from abortion, immigration, but as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the issue that's top priority for many voters is the economy. I think I struck a nerve with this guy. You absolutely He's struck obviously. a nerve. The gloves came off last night in the Ohio Senate race. This is a complete fabrication. I never JD, said that. JD, you're on that, tape, Tim. brother. You're on tape, I man. I never said that. Democrat Tim Ryan locked in a tight race against Trump-backed Republican candidate J.D. Vance. The latest polls show Vance with a slight lead. And last night, in their final debate, Ryan accused Vance of pushing racist beliefs. This is who he's running around with, talking about replacement theory. There's no big grand conspiracy. This is a country who's been enriched by immigrants from all quarters of the, the world. There's no in the problem. It's shameful the for you danger, to accuse me of that, given the, my family. The it's danger. shameful for you to accuse me. My of that. turn, pal. My turn. Vance calling that claim slanderous. You are so desperate that you'll accuse me, the father of three beautiful biracial babies, of engaging in racism. We are sick of it. And last night in Georgia, where early voting has already begun, Governor Brian Kemp faced his Democratic rival Stacey Abrams. Well, I know Miss A Miss Abrams is upset and mad. The candidate that sparring over crime and abortion. He has weakened gun laws and flooded our streets. He has weakened our privacy rights and our and women's rights. He has denied women the access to reproductive care. Abrams came within 55,000 votes of beating Kemp in the last election. Kemp has signed a ban on abortions after six weeks and repeatedly blamed Democrats for the nation's economic problems. My desire is to continue to help them fight through 40-year high inflation and high gas prices. Meanwhile, in the Georgia Senate race, Republican Herschel Walker is now acknowledging that he did give a $700 check to his ex-girlfriend. Let me see. It could be. Yes, that's my check. But Walker denies knowing that the check was used to pay for an abortion. I have no idea what that can be for. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And here in Texas, we have a few big races we are watching closely. Of course, the governor's race and then the race for Bear County judge. So while early voting has already started in other states here, locally early voting starts next week on Monday. You'll have from October 24th through November 4th to vote early. Election day is November 8th. We also have a sample ballot for Bear County residents to look at before you cast your votes. Just head over to KSAT.com and look for it. In your morning headlines, a wild ride for a vehicle owner trying to stop his ride from being stolen and talk about the perfect winner for a Mega Millions jackpot. Plus, Jeffrey is back and even the creepy dolls need a little love. Okay, our David Sears is here to explain all of this. This doll kind of gives you the, is it the willies? Just the, no, the creeps, know, just like, yeah, yeah, that's, we'll show it to you in just a second <laughs> and you'll hear from it in just a second. Oh, wow, oh, no. can't wait. Yeah, let's start with this. Not exactly where you want to start your week. This is a man lying across a windshield of his own SUV, and you can see he's got a grip on the luggage rack. The guy driving is trying to steal it. That driver taking that man for a ride, taking off with his SUV. It's happening on the streets of Chicago. According to some witnesses, the man went into a liquor store and left his car running, and when he came out, somebody was about to drive off with it, and that's when he jumped on for the ride. At some point, the driver gave up and aborted the whole idea. Well, the man who was taken for a ride, apparently okay. No word on any arrests, though. So how's this for a great story? A few weeks ago, Fort Myers, Florida, got washed away by Hurricane Ian. It was a life-changing event for those residents, and now another life-changing event. Somebody in Fort Myers had the winning numbers for the Mega Millions jackpot. It was worth a half a billion dollars, like $494 billion. It was the 11th largest in the history of the game. The jackpot will have to be shared, though, since there was another winning ticket in California. If you were a Toys R Us kid, now your kid can be a Toys R Us kid. Remember the toy store ran into some financial trouble? Jeffrey and his friends are back. Uh, they did a deal with Macy's to open up an area inside those stores. They are back in several cities, including San Antonio. We've had an eyewitness account. Our producer has been to the Macy's at La Cantera. 
So we have had eyes on Jeffrey at La Cantera. I don't know if she fed him or not, but we'll find out. There are Macy's stores in Ingram Park Mall, North Star, and South Park. And according to Macy's website, they all house a Toys R Us. However, our producer has yet to make it to all those. She's still got her shopping list going, though. She'll, she'll make it. We'll find out for sure from her. So enjoy Jeffrey and Toys R Us in Macy's. Yeah. All right, even the spooky, creepy, ugly, scary dolls need a little love, and this one fits all the criteria. <laughs> yeah. The doll was designed to freak people out. It has. But it didn't work on Briar. No, she fell in love with the demon doll. <laughs> it's wide-eyed, red eyes, creepy laugh, creepy noise. Her nickname is Creepy Chloe. But she loves her Chloe. They even went to Disney World together and ended up being treated like queens. They got a backstage tour of the Haunted Mansion. They got a cupcake made their honor and then ended up with national attention despite the creepy cry. Interviews left and right. Like we had an interview with Inside Edition last night and the Drew Barrymore show called me the other day. And um, the New York Times did an article and the Washington Post. <laughs> I'm not sure that laugh put her to sleep, but maybe so. But she, you know, I, you know, I guess you got to have all kinds. Even those get love every now and then. Oh, so a little baby so. doll needs some cream on her face. Yeah. Skin's oh. a and I don't know if you saw, but <laughs> notice there, there was some, some video of, of mom and daughter and doll sitting there. I guess they were sitting on the, like the edge of her bed, uh -huh. and she had another doll. And it looked just almost as creepy as this one. Really? Ooh, okay. On the pillow. Yeah, Little girl knows what she likes. <laughs> yeah, I guess what was it? Beauty, <laughs> the eye of the beholder. Uh, yeah. Really. So, but, takes yeah. all kinds. I don't know. but I like that independence that she has. Yeah. Right. Do that's your thing, girl. Understanding parent right there. I don't know if I yeah. would, you know. Yeah, you said Rooney wanted something creepy. It wasn't that creepy. <laughs> you were like, no. She was smaller, and I just kind of like, oh, look at, look at this over here. <laughs> yeah, no. Every <laughs> doll way. needs some love. Okay. okay. Yes. Thanks, David. Thanks, All David. Right. All right, it's 9.09 and 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the newest podcast episode of South Texas Crime Stories is out now, and the team is diving into the so-called satanic panic hysteria. Plus... Cempasulchis or marigolds play an important role in the Day of the Dead. Coming up, we take you to a community farm that is growing the special flower. In the heart of San Antonio's west side, the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center preserves and promotes the rich traditions of Chicano, Latino, and Native American cultures. In 1980, a group of Chicano artists saw the need for shaping the Hispanic artistic experience in San Antonio. So they founded the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center and since its creation, it has promoted Chicano and Latino artists across six artistic disciplines through their dance company, Cine Festival and Tejano Conjunto Festival, the center helps preserve Latin traditions and artistic innovation. With its community-based education, commissions, and collaboration with Mexican artists, the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center has become the model for other Latino community-based organizations across the Southwest and the nation. A local community farm is preserving tradition by growing flowers that honor the dead. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from Garcia Street Urban Farm on the east side with a look at the different flowers that they've grown that people will use to adorn altars on Day of the Dead. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. These flowers are absolutely beautiful. Just take a look at them. These flowers will adorn altars in homes, businesses, schools, and even at Muertos Fest. We have Giovanna with the Community Farm joining us to talk a little bit more about these flowers. Good morning, Giovanna. Talk to us about what flowers we can find here. So you'll find Cempasuchil, which is also known as Marigold. Um, we have Globe Amaranth, also known as Gamfrina. We have Mano de Leon. We have Solojas, um, and those those are pretty much the, the flowers you would see on a typical altar. These flowers, it took a lot of time and dedication and love. Talk to us about the process. So we usually start in the summertime. Um, and as you know, this summer was really hot. And so our germination was really struggling. Um, we had to kind of figure out ways to help them germinate so that 
we could have them on time, we time them out. They take typically about two months for them to start growing, uh, to blooming actually. Um, and it just takes a lot of loving care and patience and watching over them, keeping track of uh, the pests that end up on them because pests can make or break your crop sometimes. How many years have you all been doing this? Uh, this is our fourth growing season. Uh, and it's honestly, it's been, it's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but it's been really fun learning how to grow uh, them and also like shout out to the Arnoskis because they are our actual idols when it comes to growing Sempasuchi. They've been doing it for over 20 years. People cannot even imagine. This is right here in the in the heart of the east side, right next to houses. How does this reflect uh, our community and what's happened here and Dia de los Muertos and the evolution of all of this? I, I think there's a reemergence of this tradition, right? I, I think that a lot more of the youth are taking on a tradition that kind of died no pun intended, um, but it, it's, I think us growing these traditional flowers really helps reconnect a lot of people with the tradition of putting an altar together for our departed. Can people come here this week and, and get some of these flowers? Yes, absolutely. We are here Wednesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's our, night mar uh, our market stand, um, and we will be selling flowers. We will also be doing a bunch of other pop-ups, so follow us on social media for, for any pop-ups we might have throughout the city. Well, incredible work. And as I was mentioning to Giovanna, you can tell these flowers are loved. They are very they are. loved. <laughs> I will send it back to you. They're thank beautiful. You. Oh, so beautiful out there. I'm jealous of you, Tiffany. Beautiful shot, thank you. Hey, speaking of Dia Los Muertos, I uh, just wanted to give this little tidbit of news. So, remember the Mama Coco that died at the, or at the end of the Pixar? So the real character that inspired Mama Coco, she's actually, uh, she died at the age of 109 years old. Her name was Maria Salud Ramirez Caballero. And she um, died in Santa Fe de Laguna, which was in the state of Michoacan. So apparently Pixar, before they actually made the film, they went and lived with a lot of these families wow. um, to really grasp the culture. And one of the houses they lived with was the real Mama Coco. You said people were visiting her. Yes, and fans fans away. figured yeah. out that she was the inspiration behind it for Coco, and they would take pictures with her. Wow. So I'm sure she loved that. But 109. Wow. wow. She was the the great grandma. Yes, right? yes the one yes. that the, you cry at the end of the movie yeah. where they say, yes. "Remember me." Oh, oh, I know. oh, got me my feelings. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> great movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Justin yeah. also got me my feelings. These fall temps. It's uh, like you just walk outside and everyone's happy this morning. She wants to I wear agree. her scarf. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not quite scarf weather, but we're getting close tomorrow oh, morning. Light scarf. Light scarf. Light Ashmina. scarf. <laughs> tomorrow it's happening. Uh, rainfall wise, we did pick up some rain yesterday over six tenths of an inch, 1.62 since September 1st. We're still below average. I mean, yesterday was not near enough. We're at 8.84. We're still nearly 18 inches below average, which is incredible. Yesterday helped a little bit, but we still need some more. There is a little bit more in the forecast. We'll show you that in just a second. First, though, let's start with the radar. We've got a few showers moving south of San Antonio. These are beginning to dissipate and will probably continue to push south. So rain, that's pretty much over with for us. Then we're going to focus on the cloud cover. When does it move out? It'll take some time, but I think eventually we'll go mostly sunny this afternoon. Right now, 57 degrees at the airport. Northeast Julie winds at about 6. And the cloud cover still pretty extensive here. You see a... A uh, pretty good cloud deck over top of us. There are a few breaks here and there, but again, I think it takes until the afternoon for these clouds to really break up and for us to see that sun. 56 right now, Canyon Lake, 54, Bernie Station, mostly cloudy, 56, Rio Medina, 59 right now in Hondo. And here's a look at the forecast when it comes to those clouds. And by midday, still probably mostly cloudy, but by 2, 3 o'clock, here comes the sun and we'll get some drier air moving in as well. And that means we'll get clear skies as we go into tonight. Here's the forecast high, 68 here in San Antonio, 69 in Braunfels. We could go as high as 70 in places like Seguin. So a cool fall-like day, but watch what happens tonight with the clear skies. Light winds, radiational cooling takes place. We're down to 44 here in San Antonio by tomorrow morning. This is 7 a.m. 37 Bernie, 40 Canyon Lake, 38 Kerrville. So it is going to be a chilly start to your Wednesday. Our coolest morning we've seen in a long, long time. And here's the setup today. So we got a big trough off to the east. That was that chunk of cool air, and we've, we're feeling some of it here. And then a ridge of high pressure out west. That's where the warm temperatures will be today. The cool stuff off east, 43 Chicago, 53 Memphis, 57 in Atlanta. That's the high temperature. The really warm spot will be down there in Miami, where it will be 89. 
As we go forward in time here, the, the jet stream kind of evens out a little bit. We get some quiet weather to finish out the work week, but then another trough builds out west by Saturday. So that starts to bring in some moisture. Then we're going to turn our attention down to the Pacific. We could get a hurricane that would be Rosalind. It's not developed yet, but it is forecast to develop. Some of that moisture, if at all times outright, gets pulled up out ahead of that storm system. We get a frontal boundary. This is forecast sometime during the day on Monday. That moisture moves in with the front. That would mean some pretty good rain chances. That's something to look forward to next week. In the meantime, it's, uh, it's pretty quiet because the dew points stay low today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, we start to see them build a little bit, but it's not until the weekend that you'll notice the humidity starting to really jump up. It's a pretty uh, rapid rise there as you get into Saturday and Sunday. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 73 tomorrow after starting off at 44, 82 Thursday, and then we'll see uh, 84 Friday. Breezy, more humidity over the weekend, then it's warmer. We're near 90 both Saturday and Sunday, and then it's Monday where we start to see those changes again, another front. And if we can get the moisture in here, that Pacific moisture, there could be some good rain chances. We'll just have to wait till we get a little bit closer to work out the timing. Yeah. All right, like, the like friend's good. Tiffany was wearing a light scarf. Oh, there she you go. Was. What I'm talking about, a light scarf to keep your neck nice. Yes. Not, not a scarf. heavy one. I'm going to bring a light scarf, a pashmina tomorrow, so you know what that is. Yeah. Just, okay. You said you have enough for all well, I'm I'm I, I honestly I'm do. I'm taking notes. So. <laughs> Each, everyone's getting a pashmina. Yes. We should wear them while we can. <laughs> we Thank you, Justin. Yeah. All right, it is 922 and 58 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide looking at I-35 at Thousand Oaks. Uh, you can see this is where that vehicle fire was reported on the South Mound Lanes. The access road, though, looking really bad right now. So if you can avoid this area, that would be an awesome idea. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 925. A leading researcher at UT Health San Antonio says she's finding a higher rate of cancer among Latinos. Jesse Deguado looked into the claim and tells us about the risk factors that may be to blame. Gilbert Lozano and his son aren't alone. They're among an alarming number of Latino families living with cancer. As it is, Lozano says, his wife has had it for 10 years or more. And now she is my rock. Next year, it's predicted 142% more Latinos nationwide will be diagnosed with cancer. Trying to find out why, by studying the data, is a team led by Dr. Amelie Ramirez, a nationally recognized researcher at the UT Health San Antonio Mays Cancer Center. Cancer now is the leading cause of death in Latinos. For other population groups, it's cardiovascular disease. Dr. Ramirez says those other groups also can have leading risk factors such as obesity and diabetes, but no health insurance jumps out among Latinos. Lozano says he's been obese most of his life and had diabetes for years, but at least he's got insurance. But Dr. Ramirez says all too many other Latinos do not have health insurance. So if they have cancer, how early can they come in to be treated or can they get treated? A priority for her, she says, is the fear factor among Latinos, which puts them at risk by avoiding routine tests, checkups, and not knowing whether it's been in their family. You know, people don't want to talk about it because they said if they just talk about it, it might happen to them. And so it just perpetuates itself. It just goes on and on one generation after the other. And uh, they just don't want to know. Yet in many cases, Dr. Ramirez says early detection could save or prolong lives. After all, says Lozano. You don't take care of yourself, nobody's going to. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. It's 927 and 58 degrees. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Yesterday's big news was the sale of over-the-counter hearing aids. However, experts say there are some things you need to know before you head to the store. And welcome back. It's 931. True Crime Fans, a new podcast episode of South Texas Crime Stories is out now to check out the so-called Satanic Panic hysteria spread across the U.S. in the 80s and early 90s, and people all over the country were arrested and convicted of crimes against children. However, it turned out to be false. So host Erica Hernandez and Lee Waldman look into the hysteria that got five people wrongfully convicted here in San Antonio. They dive into these cases with new information that you might not have heard of at the time. So you can tune into South Texas Crime Stories on Apple Podcast or Spotify Podcast, and don't forget to subscribe. It all started with a sticker. What was the sticker? It was a UTSA sticker, actually. Yeah, UTSA. It said UTSA Roadrunners. 
So today on the News at 5, Marilyn Moritz introduces us to a young college student who's launching a storefront where women entrepreneurs can sell their products. It's a small business story that started with a simple sticker. Tune in for that later today in the News at 5. Sounds cool. And taking a look outside with live cam, I went out for my second dose of caffeine. It was nice and cool out there, Justin. Yeah, it feels great. And, and I was looking through the window this morning as I was sitting there working on the forecast and I could see the sunrise. It was beautiful. The colors were incredible. So I sprinted up to the roof, got some shots wow. on uh, social media. That looks media. like a Lisa Frank. Lisa, like, Lisa Frank. Yeah. Remember Lisa throwback. Frank? I do. Lots of color. Bigly. <laughs> Throwback. Uh, yeah, I guess that is a good comparison. <laughs> Let me just show you the picture here in case I connect. Uh, and this person says, how lucky are we? I agree with that. This uh, this was a beautiful sunrise. It didn't last very long, but the colors were incredible with the mostly cloudy skies we had this morning. Thank you so much for submitting that picture. Let's look at the pollen count real quick. It's just molds today. They're moderate, 730. So that number's down a little bit. Cloud cover still there. You see the showers down to the south of us. So Corpus Christi down into deep south Texas and the rain is continuing to shift south. So we've got to lose these clouds and that probably happens a little bit later this afternoon. Likely mostly cloudy to cloudy though through at least the lunch hour. 61, 11 o'clock, 63 noontime and then mostly sunny by four o'clock, 68 degrees. Your high temperature today. We'll still see some gusty northeasterly winds. Uh, could gust up to around 20, 25 miles per hour, perhaps. But the winds die down tonight and with clear skies. We're going to see a really chilly morning coming up tomorrow. Very quickly, let's get you updated on what's going on, on the roads, because we do have that issue still on the northeast side. This was at uh, I-35 and Thousand Oaks. There was an incident it may have been cleared by now, but we're still getting residual backups. You can see that southbound lanes are still backed up all the way to 1604 and beyond. So if uh, that uh, is an area you will be traveling in, you might want to avoid it. Uh, there are uh, I-35 southbound, and that, again, is around 1,000 Oaks, guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, there's more evidence that it's getting harder for American workers to keep up with the cost of living. A new survey finds a huge majority of American workers say their wages are not keeping up with inflation. So what can you do if your expenses are outpacing your salary? Experts weigh in on just how to adjust and survive as crushing inflation erodes people's paychecks. CNN's Gene Sullivan has a story. Historic inflation, soaring borrowing costs, and stagnant wages. New evidence that American workers struggle to make ends meet. I mean, how much more can people spend? I think the, the rubber is about to hit the road there. A new survey sponsored by Bank of America found that nearly three in four American workers surveyed said the cost of living is outpacing their salary and wages. The data also found that half of employees said that they have to take action to deal with the economic strain. And experts say adjusting your lifestyle is a key first step. Do you really need a new car? Do you really need extra subscriptions? A recession is the opportunity to look between what, where we spend our money and what we value and bring them into alignment. Among the group taking action, 21% are tapping into emergency savings to pay for bills, while 6% are dipping into their 401k and making a hardship withdrawal, and 20% are looking for a higher paying job. The data paints a dire picture of workers under significant financial pressure as crushing inflation erodes paychecks. There's a lot of people who are just realizing that paycheck to paycheck life is more and more of kind of the default that a lot of us are experiencing because of the fact that prices continue to outpace uh, our wages. Latina money coach Jenny's Torres says that's pushing some to make major career moves. I'm talking to a lot of people who are thinking about how to diversify their income, either through gig work or starting their own business or even multiple jobs. She recommends turning your creative skills into a side hustle or turning your professional skills into a consulting business and sell directly to customers. They can take the middleman out, which is corporate America, and just go straight to the consumer, offer their services at a higher price. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. In other news, the ability to buy over-the-counter hearing aids now can help millions of Americans have a better quality of life. Hearing aids will be showing up at more stores, and as CNN's Ivan Rodriguez reports, health experts are excited about the bright future ahead for helping those with healing, hearing loss. For the first time, Hearing aids can now be purchased over the counter without a prescription, exam, or fitting, following an August rule change by the FDA. The people most help are adults with mild to moderate hearing loss who might not take that first step. 
The White House says hearing aids will soon be available at major retailers, including Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, and Best Buy, and claim this could save people as much as $3,000 per year. That's thousands of dollars going back into the pockets of Americans. Experts say leaving hearing loss untreated could be detrimental to overall health. Studies have shown some links to dementia, poor mental health, and increased risks of falls. Hearing health is part of overall wellness, just as is your blood pressure, cholesterol, your weight, everything else to staying fit. Many hope the increased availability of hearing aids will also help remove the stigma attached to wearing devices, while the increased competition could lead to cheaper, better technology in the future. The future is bright in how we can use them and how they might be impacting our ability to track our health. In Washington, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. And there are some things to keep in mind if you are buying over-the-counter hearing aids. Yeah, experts say the first thing you should do before heading to the store is get a hearing test done. This will let you know your hearing levels and help determine whether your hearing loss is caused by a condition that may not require a hearing aid like wax buildup. Next is know what you're buying. Experts say a return policy is crucial. The FDA rule says a policy has to be plainly stated on the packaging, but extended return policies are up to the stores. And check the product's warranty and whether it covers maintenance and repairs. And look for the words OTC or over-the-counter hearing aid on the package. If the product doesn't say that, it's not an FDA regulated device. So if you have any questions, contact an audiologist for advice. And while over-the-counter hearing aids are a great option for those with mild to moderate hearing loss, those with more severe hearing loss will need prescription hearing aids. It is 938 and 58 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And there's a new episode of Case It Explains to check out. And if you didn't get to watch it yesterday, well, Justin Horn is going to tell us a little bit about it after the break. And welcome back. It's 942. A new episode of Case It Explains aired yesterday. And in case you missed it, it was all about Doppler radar. And Justin Horn helped the team talk about technology behind it. Yeah, so Justin, tell us a little bit about the episode and the awesome trip to the National Weather Service Station. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So uh, we decided to talk about Doppler radar. This was brought up by one of our producers, Dylan. He's like, you know, you guys use Doppler radar all the time, but I'm not sure that everyone completely understands how it works or why it works or why we use it. So naturally they're you know asked meteorologists to talk about it and i was more than happy to do it uh and it is really pretty interesting how it all works and how much better doppler radar has gotten over the years to where i mean it is it is the tool we rely on when there's stuff going on and we can look at bats too oh, we can that's see bats cool. on doppler radar so it's pretty uh Pretty cool piece. If you want to check it out, it's uh, it's on our website, ksat.com. I have a question. Um, so how far spaced out are Doppler radars? Like, we obviously have one for our San Antonio viewing area. Correct. Does Austin have their own? So uh, the one in New Braunfels covers Austin and San Antonio. And then we have another one that's a little bit north of that. We have one out near Brackettville. So it kind of covers, you know, 150 miles or so. And it covers that territory. That's about as far as they can go. Very cool. You can yes, check it out on kset.com. Pretty interesting stuff. Right. I like being nerdy. I like it. You like lit up. It was like, <laughs> it's like time yeah. to shine. Time yeah, to shine. yeah. yeah it's, it, it's exciting stuff. So we got to use the radar yesterday, which was awesome. And we have good. a little bit of uh, rain still left on the radar this morning. We'll show you that for, uh, in just a second. But first, uh, let's start with another picture. This one out of nice. Kerrville. We've got these sunrise coming in, uh, pictures coming in quick. And I, I don't blame you. There's so many good ones out there. And this is a, a great scene. Uh, with the clouds and, and just the colors this morning. It was just the right amount of cloud cover to get those pinks and purples. And that was a scene again in Kerrville. We appreciate the picture as always. Here's the setup. We've got that frontal boundary that is still over parts of deep South Texas, but the rain is pushing south. And then behind it, we're getting in that cooler air mass. And temperature is going to be cold enough where there are frost and freeze advisories for a large portion of, well, Northeast Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas temperatures are going to fall below freezing in these spots. It looks like by tomorrow morning. So we didn't get the bulk of the cold air. We kind of got uh, brushed by it, if you will. So we're not going to get below freezing here, but it does get chilly tomorrow morning. We'd start off or we make it up to 68 degrees this afternoon here in town. 66 Fair Oaks Ranch, 66 Bernie, 69 New Braunfels, 70 in Seguin. But by tomorrow morning with the clear skies, light winds, these temperatures fall all the way down to 44 here in San Antonio, 38 Ferrox Ranch, 37 Bernie, 40 Canyon Lake. So it is going to be, I, I call it cold, a cold start tomorrow morning, scarf weather, 
is what Sarah says. So we'll go with that. Uh, as we go outside, uh, you can see it's 57 at the airport, 59 Stinson, 59 Kelly, 57 at Randolph. And we're still looking at cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Pretty good northeasterly wind, too. Wind may be a little bit gusty today, up around uh, 20, 25 miles per hour. There is the radar, and we notice we've got a few very light showers still working across our far southern counties. So places like Beeville, you may still be getting a few sprinkles, but this is generally winding down, and we are not looking for rain today here in San Antonio. In fact, the sun comes out this afternoon. We see these clouds begin to shift south, begin to break up. This is noontime today, and then by uh, dinner time, skies are clearing, and then we'll see clear skies going into tonight and into tomorrow morning. Here is the uh, setup. We've got that big trough out, out east, which is where all those cold numbers are. It's only going to be 43 in Chicago today, but the pattern changes a little bit, kind of flattens out some, so we get some quiet weather through the work week. And then by Saturday, another trough starts to develop out west. That starts to draw in some moisture. And we're going to be watching what's going on in the Pacific. There is a developing system. It has not developed yet, but we think that it will eventually become Hurricane, Hurricane Rosalind. And it's possible that some of this moisture gets drawn up into Texas as we get a frontal boundary coming in, and that would enhance our rain chances on Monday. Something to watch. Several things have to come together here. It's always about timing when it comes to these Pacific systems. But if it does time out right, then we could see some pockets of heavy rain Monday. Something to watch. Right now we've got rain chances at about 30% on Monday. Otherwise, it's dry through the weekend. Here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. 73 Wednesday, and we'll go 82 on Thursday, 84 Friday. So warm afternoons, but chilly mornings. Again, 44 tomorrow morning, 49 on Thursday morning. Finally, feels like fall. Love to see it. Okay, so I yeah. asked Mike this question. Mm -hmm. He was a little hesitant okay. uh, because are these Halloween. are these temperatures going to continue on Halloween? And he said, well, there is a two-week forecast that we don't really like to rely on, but no. with maybe lower mm. humidity. It's maybe. Too, it's but he said it's too early. early. He it's said it's too early. early. And around here, I mean, Halloween can be 93. Right. And it can be 55. <laughs> 50, right. So uh, it's just too early to say. We'll, we'll hope for the latter, though. Yeah. All right, or, so. or a happy medium. Somewhere in the middle. Something yeah, like that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like your, you know, Big Bird costume might be too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bird costume? Is that a tall joke? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> just saying. Okay, Strike me as a Big Bird guy. <laughs> any costume. Any big costume. Yeah. There you go. It'd be too hot. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Pluck, yeah. pluck those feathers, Justin. Okay. <laughs> All right, so in case you missed it, last night on Dancing with the Stars, actress Selma Blair, who has MS, had to drop out of the contest to take care of her health. Yeah, she danced fearlessly from the start, but she had to say goodbye because of bone trauma and other problems found in an MRI. ABC's George Pinocchio has the recap from the ballroom. I can't go on with the competition. Selma Blair let her dance partner, Sasha Farber, know it was time for her to waltz away with one last gentle dance. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Her special goodbye got a standing ovation, a ceremonial perfect score from the judges, and a lot of love. Tonight was what it feels like to win a Mirabal, I think. <laughs> It was really, really beautiful. She just embodied just such grace, and it was the most beautiful send-offs I've ever seen on the show. Um, that was a really special moment. I'll never, I'll never have a night like this again, so it was really incredible. You might if you win an Oscar. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, it wouldn't feel this special. Selma's story has been an inspiring one to watch. Her courage has captivated viewers and her castmates. She's made history and she's made so many people so proud. And she's made the people here honored to have got to know her. She's also really cool. <laughs> yeah, you know? she's also she's Selma good, Blair. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just good. She's a good human. She sheds positivity and it uplifts people and, and just is so encouraging and so happy and she's honestly like, we're gonna miss her energy here. I know. I feel like the barroom's a little less bright without her in it and on the floor. She's just so beautiful. She's dazzling when she dances. She's amazing as a person and she's very, very kind and sweet. She's such a loving person. So she really inspires me. And I applaud her because she inspires everyone else. I love Literally. his heart and spirit and this one. Oh my God. She I gives me. Take them. And just before Selma left the ballroom, she had a joyful dance moment with her new friends. 
With Selma now out of the competition, 11 couples return to this ballroom Tuesday night for a theme of prom night. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. It's 950 and 58 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, Dwayne Johnson is back in the movie theaters this weekend in a role he's been preparing for for more than a decade. CNN's Rick Damagella gives us a preview of Black Adam, which comes out on Friday. I was a slave until I died. Then I was reborn a god. My son sacrificed his life to save me. Dwayne Johnson powers up in the latest DCEU adventure, Black Adam. These powers are not a gift. One of the most intriguing parts about playing Black Adam is we were able to create, and this is a high standard that I'm getting ready to throw out here, um, we were able to create the Dirty Harry of uh, the superhero genre in Black Adam. I never said I was a hero. Clint Eastwood is my all-time favorite actor, and we were able to, uh, we pay homage in Black Adam a little bit to Clint Eastwood. We're the Justice Society. Johnson's character is among several heroes new to the big screen. These guys have a great deal of history being brothers in arms on the battlefield and also just at home trying to, as you can see, Dr. Fate is like my true north throughout the film, always guiding me and, and helping, you know, Hawkman still in this space be a leader. For us as the actors, we were a very tight-knit group. Yeah. You know, uh, and we were all in it together, and it was unspoken. Yeah. We, we had lunches and dinners, and we all came together with kind of ease and grace and respect for each other. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Science with Sarah will be live at an elementary school on the city's southwest side. We're going to have to wait till tomorrow to see what kind of experiment Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be doing with the students there. But we know they also have a good time, and it's educational for the kids. I love watching it, so tune in for that tomorrow. Okay, your four-legged friends can now join in on the Thanksgiving festivities this year. Bush Beer has debuted a limited edition dog brew for the upcoming winter holiday season. But don't worry, the drink is non-alcoholic among the ingredients in the 2022 beverage. Turkey, sweet potato, turmeric, and ginger. So four packs cost $15 and can be purchased on Bush's website. In 2020, Bush released a different dog brew that officials say sold out within a day. I'm just saying that dog looks happy. Right? The pic <laughs> the it sounds pictures. like all the things we'll a dog would like. Yeah, how cute. Um, I, Scooby has tried a version of one of these. Oh, really? And yeah, yeah, he loved it. Aww. Like, sure. I put it in a little bowl for him and well, you gotta do this. I, I tasted it. It tasted. It just tastes like a kombucha. You get him the uh, puppy chinos too, or whatever. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, the puppy chinos. He for throws sure. a fit if we go through the line, and I don't get. You need to get one. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> Have a good day, guys.